regarding the concept of Almighty God in Islam, is quote to you the Surah of the Holy Quran, Surah Ikhlas, chapter number 112, verse number 1 to 4, which says, Qul Say He is Allah one and only. Allah Hu Samad. Allah the Absolute and Eternal. As Samad is a bit difficult to translate. It means that He exists and He has created things when nothing existed. Everything and every person is dependent on Him. But He is not dependent on any person or anything. As Samad, the Absolute and Eternal. Lam Yalid wa Lam Yulad. He begets not, nor is he begotten. Walam yakullahu kufu an ad. There is nothing like him. This is a four line definition of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is the touchstone of theology. Surah Ikhlas is the touchstone of theology. Theo in Greek means God. Logi means study. Theology means study of God. Surah Ikhlas is the touchstone of theology. If anyone wants to purchase or sell any of the gold jewelries, first they'll evaluate their gold jewelry. And for that they will go to a goldsmith. And the goldsmith, he takes your gold jewelry and he rubs it against a touchstone. And he compares the color with samples of gold which he has rubbed at the side. And then tells you whether it's 24 karat gold, whether it's 22 karat gold, or whether it is not gold at all. It may be fake gold, because all that glitters is not gold. Surah Ikhlas is the touchstone of theology. It's a four line definition. If you apply to any candidate who says that is Almighty God, and if we fit in this definition, we Muslims have got no objection in accepting that candidate as Almighty God. It's a touchstone. It's the asset test to decipher whether the person that anyone claims, whether he is Almighty God or not. It's the asset test. It's the touchstone. Four line definition. Qul huwa Allahu ahad. Say he is Allah one and only. Allah hu samad. Allah the absolute and eternal. Lam yalid wa lam yulad. He begets not, nor is begotten. Wa lam yakul kufu an ahad. There is nothing like him. It's a four-line definition. Anyone claiming to be Almighty God, if that candidate fits in this four-line definition, we Muslims have got no objection in accepting that candidate as Almighty God. For example, some people say that Bhagwan Rajnish, Oto Rajnish, he is Almighty God. I would like to make it very clear, I said some people say Bhagwan Rajnish is God. Not Hindus say Bhagwan Rajnish is God. Because once, during question answer time, there was a Hindu gentleman who came and told me that we Hindus don't believe in Bhagwan Rajnish as God. I have read the Hindu scriptures. I know that the Hindu scriptures don't call Bhagwan Rajnish as God. I said some people call him God and Rajnish has got followers from various different religions. Let's put him to test of the touchstone of theology, Surah class. The first is, Qul huwa Allahu ahad. Say he is Allah one and only. Is Rajnish one and only? We know that we have several such fake godmen, especially in our country, India. He is not one and only. But there may be some people who are disciples of Rajnish and say, no, no, Rajnish is one and only. Okay, let's go to the second test. Allah hu samad. Allah the absolute and eternal. Is Rajnish absolute and eternal? We know from his biography that he was suffering from diabetes, from asthma, from chronic backache, and he alleged that the American government they gave him slow poisoning. Imagine God being poisoned. The third test is Lam Yalid Walam Yulad. He begets not, nor is he begotten. We know that Rajnish had parents. He had a mother and father. He was born in Jabalpur in Madhya Pradesh in India. But he was a very intelligent person. Later on, his parents became his own disciples. And in the year 1981, 
Rajnish, he goes to America. And in Oregon, he establishes his own town and calls it Rajnishpuram. He took America for a ride. Later on, the American government, they arrested him and put him in jail. And later on, kicked him out of the country. In 1985, when he was kicked out from America, he comes back to India and in Pune, he starts Rajnish Neosanyas Commune, which later on, he called it as Osho Commune. And when you go to Pune in the Osho Commune, it's mentioned on his tombstone. Osho, never born, never died, but visited the earth from the 11th of December 1931 to the 19th of January 1990. They forgot to mention that he was not given visas to 21 different countries. Imagine Almighty God visiting the earth and he requires visas. <laughs> and the Archbishop of Greece said that if you don't deport Rajnish, we will burn his house and the house of his disciples. And the last test, Walam Yapullahu Kufu An Ahad, it is so stringent, it's impossible for anyone besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the true Almighty God to pass. It says there's nothing like Him. The moment you can imagine, the moment you can draw a mental picture, what God is, He is not God. We know that Rajnish, it was a human being like you and me. We had one head, two hands, two legs, two eyes, one nose. One mouth, long flowing beard, long hair. So surely, he can't be Almighty God. Walam yakullahu kufwan ahad. There is nothing like him. And this test, walam yakullahu kufwan ahad, is so stringent that no one besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can pass. Suppose someone says that Anil Swashnigar. You know Anil Swashnigar? The person who is known as the strongest man in the world. He was given the title Mr. Universe. If suppose someone says that Almighty God is a thousand times as strong as Arnold Schwarzenegger. The moment you can compare God to anyone, whether it be Arnold Schwarzenegger, whether it be Dara Singh or King Kong, whether it be a thousand times or a million times, the moment you can compare Almighty God to anyone, he is not Almighty God. Walam yakullahu kufu an ahad. There is nothing like him. This is a four-line definition given in the Holy Quran, Surah Ikhlas, which is the touchstone of theology. We Muslims, we prefer calling Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by the Arabic name Allah instead of the English word God. Because the Arabic word Allah, it is pure, it is unique. Whereas the English word God, it can be played around with. You can play around with that word. If you add a S to God, it becomes God's plural of God. There is nothing like plural Allah in Islam. Qul Allahu ahad. Say He is Allah one and only. If you add a D-E-S-S to God, it becomes Goddess, a female God. There is nothing like male Allah or female Allah in Islam. Allah is unique. He has got no gender. If you add a father to God, it becomes Godfather. He is my Godfather. He is my guardian. There is nothing like Allah Father in Islam or Allah Abba in Islam. If you add a mother to God, it becomes Godmother. There is nothing like Allah Mother or Allah Ami in Islam. Allah is a unique word. It's a pure word. If you prefix a tin before God, it becomes tin God. There's nothing like tin Allah in Islam. That's the reason we Muslims, we prefer calling Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by the Arabic word Allah instead of the English word God. But if some Muslims, if they use this word by speaking to non-Muslims, I've got no objection. Because non-Muslims may not know what is the concept of Allah? So if anyone uses God for Allah, I have got no objection. But the more appropriate word is Allah.